Hello, good evening. First tonight, the BBC has learnt waiting lists for children with serious mental health issues are now at dangerously high levels in some parts of the West. Specialist help from the NHS is so stretched, some children who are considering suicide and self-harm in North Somerset are having to wait 18 months before they get help. The local NHS says extra money is now being pumped into Weston. Our social affairs correspondent Fiona Lambden has been to meet one teenager who struggled with depression. I felt alone. I didn't feel like a person anymore. I felt just like a shell, sort of thing. So. Abby says she was bullied at school. She became so depressed she didn't leave her bedroom for a year. Like how I was feeling, I basically didn't want to live anymore. So I just. You always think about really messed up things of just like how you can escape your life. Which is what one of her closest friends did by killing himself. It just felt a bit like a knock to me because it was just like, whoa. <laughs> um, I mean, it did in a way inspire me, but to, you know, get better. But it just also felt a bit like, well, if he's given up, like, should I? but she didn't. Abby came to Helen for counselling. She works on the Bourneville, one of the most deprived estates in the West. Demand is now so high, she's turning many families away. We've had a couple of suicides in the last few years in North Somerset of young people, and even one is too much, isn't it? And, yeah, I work with children who I am afraid are on that edge, and without the support, where would they be? It does worry me. Those who are at such serious risk are referred to Child and Adolescent Mental Health Services, specialist NHS help known as CAMS. But I've been told waiting lists are long, and to be seen, they have to be at real danger to themselves. The kind of children we're seeing, they're, the presenting issues are much more complex. The kind of issues you would normally expect to go to CAMS, but because CAMS are overwhelmed, they're, they're kind of nowhere to go, really, so we're picking those so up. Picking them up. Yeah, and then there's, that wouldn't have happened, like, six, seven years ago. Helen's drop-in centre is trying to catch children early. Did you have a good day at school today, Josh? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it was all right, good. For Josh, it's a safe space. There's always someone to listen. Out on the streets, there's loads of violence and things like that. Whereas if you come in here, it's chilled and obviously people won't judge you and you've got people to talk to. Josh's school is less than a mile from the estate. The head says his pupils' mental health is the worst he's seen in two decades, but he's worried they can't get the specialist help. When I first started teaching, it was normal to wait six months or so to get a CAMS referral through. Now we're hearing from families and we're experiencing ourselves that that wait can be 12 and eight, up to 18 months. They are being seen here, but by the school's own counsellor. Are there some problems going on for you? Is that something you feel happy to talk about with me? But this is leaving less money in the pot for teaching. We have a finite budget. The budget doesn't increase because we now have increased mental health issues and of course that means that that finite budget has to then be spread between more things and that will directly impact the young people. So what do the people funding this specialist mental health service say? Children and young people who have recognised serious psychotic uh, problems such as schizophrenia will be seen urgently within a maximum of three to four days. For a youngster, a whole academic year or more on a waiting list while they're going through a great deal of difficulty is going to impact negatively on their long-term life chances. So we're addressing that through increased investment, um, targeted more at North Somerset. Abby is now getting better. She's back in school, studying for A-levels. And I feel better and I, my grades are showing that I'm better. But I still... It's like a scar that won't heal. Abby got the help she needed, but only because her family fought for it. A battle an increasing number are having to take on. Fiona Lambdin, BBC Points West, Western.